Station wagons, why do they exist? I get asked that question all the time. And the best way to answer that is that they are for people that want something larger than a small hatchback, but don't want to drive a high riding SUV. They want the utility and convenience without having too much size. Now within the station wagon segment itself, there are some really fun performance wagons, and this is one of them. My name is Omar, and this is the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered. And man, I absolutely love this thing. Now, no one really thinks station wagons are sexy and no one has much pride in driving them around. But I beg to differ because Volvo has some of the best looking wagons out there. The V60 that I'm driving here looks awesome, but Volvo also makes the V90, which looks even better. Design wise, it's one of my personal favorite vehicles of all time, and I would honestly buy one. Unfortunately, Volvo got rid of the low riding V90 from the US market, so now you can only get it as a high riding cross country, but that's a whole different story. The V60 though is available as a cross country and a low riding wagon like the one that I'm driving here. Now bear with me here for a few seconds because Volvo's way of configuring the lineup can get very, very confusing. So the V60 cross country can only be had with a mild hybrid gasoline engine setup and the same goes for the V90 cross country. If you want the recharge hybrid goodness that Volvo now offers in a wagon form, you can only get it in this, the low riding V60. Not only that, even though this is essentially a V60 recharge, it's not called that. It's officially called the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered. Why? Well, because if you want to go for the low riding V60 recharge, it's only available in the US as a Polestar Engineered vehicle. Still confused? Look, I tried to explain it the best I could and that's the best that I could do. But forget all that and let's talk about what you're working with under that hood. You've got a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine making a total of 312 horsepower. Now, unlike the previous models, this engine is no longer supercharged. Instead, Volvo threw on a 143 horsepower electric motor that sits at the rear axle and working together, they give this a total of 455 horsepower and 523 pound-feet of torque. And yeah, that's the same setup that you have in all the Volvo recharge hybrids, including the S60, the XC60, the S90, and the XC90. So what makes this one more special? Well, that's where the Polestar engineered part comes in. You get a Polestar tuned suspension that makes the ride a little bit sportier. You also get manually adjustable Olin dampers, which you can adjust right here from under the hood. And unlike the XC60 Polestar, which I tested a few months ago that had Aki Bono brakes, this gets Polestar engineered Brembo brakes. Now, besides that, you have a bunch of visual exterior and interior upgrades that we'll talk about a little bit later, but you also get yourself a specifically tuned Polestar drive mode. And this is where this station wagon becomes really fun to drive. Hit the gas and this thing takes off and it just wants to keep going and going. This will do zero to 60 in an officially quoted time of 4.3 seconds but it definitely feels much faster than that. I gotta say, Volvo's plug-in hybrids are a pleasure to drive. They're one of the few out there that balance performance and comfort the best. They basically decided not to make plug-in hybrids boring at all. Every time I get to drive a Volvo Recharge, it's one of my favorite weeks. It moves with such purpose and even the handling is really sharp. If you haven't driven a Volvo in a while or think that Volvo is just a luxury brand that's focused on safety and is kind of boring, go drive one and then let me know what you think. Because to me, this is anything but boring. But yeah, not only is this sporty, it's also very, very comfortable. Usually cars of this caliber tend to have a very stiff suspension, but this is an awesome daily driver. This definitely gives me BMW M340i vibes Anything sportier than this or stiffer than this doesn't make driving it every day a great experience. That said, since this is a plug-in hybrid, let's talk about the hybrid side of things. You have a few other drive modes on top of the Polestar mode, including hybrid, pure, and constant all-wheel drive. Hybrid is very similar to Polestar, although Polestar is just a little bit sharper. Constant all-wheel drive will keep the electric motor in the back moving the rear wheels so you'll get the traction that you're looking for. 
And then on pure mode, this will run on electric power alone. On a full charge, this will give you a total of 41 miles of electric range, which for a plug-in hybrid is pretty damn solid. Now keep in mind that when you're in pure mode, you're only using the 143 horsepower electric motor to move you. So this thing isn't as quick as it is with the Pulsar or hybrid mode, but it's not terribly slow either. In fact, I was kind of impressed by how quick the acceleration is in pure mode. It really gets you up and moving. And the other cool thing is that you don't always have to plug this in to recharge the battery every single time. You have three different battery modes, including auto, hold, and charge. If you click charge, the V60 will use the engine to recharge the battery. And just like other Volvo recharge vehicles, this gains charge in charge mode pretty quickly to the point you can fully recharge the battery just by driving it around. But yeah, no matter which mode you're driving in, the Volvo V60 Pulsar here will give you the best of both worlds. You'll get the performance that you're looking for if you want to cut loose, or if you want to go for a comfortable cruise, you can do that as well. All right, so let's talk about the looks. Look, I get it if you're not a fan of station wagons, but you have to admit the Volvo station wagons are some of the best looking vehicles on the road. The new V90 will always be my personal favorite vehicle when it comes to design. That thing looked awesome, especially with the R design package in that blue color. That said, this V60 has some unique Pulsar touches to it. Up front, you have the signature Volvo Thor's hammer headlamps surrounding a blacked out Pulsar engineered grille. You also have a Pulsar engineered logo on the grille, so everyone knows you're a special V60. From the side, the V60 Pulsar engineered looks, well, like a station wagon, but a good looking one. This thing rides on 19 inch Pulsar wheels that are made from a solid block of aluminum, which apparently are normally found on high end performance cars and race cars, but yeah, really nice set of wheels right here. The back of the V60 Polestar looks pretty similar to the V90. Now, in terms of ground clearance, this gets 5.6 inches, but if you need more for some reason, you can go for the V60 Cross Country, which is a non-Polestar again, that will give you 8.1 inches of ground clearance. But yeah, I definitely like the way this looks. I would proudly drive the V60 or the V90. Let me know what you think about the looks in the comments below. But that said, let's talk about this interior. Now, right away, the first thing you'll notice when you get in here are the gold seat belts, and that's because Pulsar engineered Volvos get a bunch of gold trims all around. But yeah, these seat belts look super dope and they get you a lot of attention. You also get these sportier seats that have a mixture of Napa leather and some fabric. They are heated as standard and you also have memory seats for the driver as well as the passenger. That's pretty cool. That said, I would have loved to see more gold going on in this cabin, maybe like some gold stitching or piping or something like that to spice it up a little bit more. Because other than the gold seat belts, you just have this nice trim. And beyond that, this is the Volvo minimalistic interior that we've come to know and love. But over here, it looks a little too simple. I would have even loved to see a flat bottom steering wheel. By the way, the steering wheel here is not flat bottom, but it is heated as standard. But yeah, other than that, this interior is a really, really nice place to be. And this crystal shifter right here is definitely a really nice touch. It's made by a company. I'm going to butcher the name right here. It's called Orifers Sweden. I will say this, that Volvo's interiors are some of the best in the luxury segment, and I feel they are really underrated. They offer better quality than most other luxury brands out there do. Now let's talk tech. Like all Volvos, you have a vertical tablet touchscreen display right here that houses a new Google-based infotainment system. You have Google Maps as your navigation, and you also have Google Assistant, and she can control various things around the car. Volvo has also finally updated the system, so now you have Apple CarPlay in here, although it is wired and not wireless, which I prefer wired over wireless. But yeah, I gotta say, this system is very easy to use, and the performance has definitely improved over the last few years. I know when they first came out, they froze a lot and jammed up, but they have definitely gotten better. Now, other than that, you have this digital gauge cluster display and nothing really fancy happens here. You can see the Google map view and that's really about it. You can show the map or not show the map. That said, let's talk driver assist tech. Since this is already pretty fully equipped, you don't have many options. So you get everything as standard, including Volvo's pilot assist system with adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning with lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert, front and rear park assist, and much, much more. As for the camera game, you're working with a rear view camera right here. And if you click the 360 button, you also have a 360 surround view. And of course, you've also got yourself a head up display. Now, all that said, since this is a station wagon, it has to be practical. So let's pull over and talk about just how practical this is. And let's start off with the rear legroom. Hop in the back and you're working with 35.2 inches of legroom back here. I'm about six foot tall. 
that is my seating position as you can see it's not bad but it's not great either it's kind of on par with the rest of the vehicles in this segment especially sedans although since this is already so expensive you do get heated seats as standard back here now, if you're looking for a Polestar engineered vehicle with more legroom, you will have to go for the XC60 Polestar engineered, and that will give you 38 inches of legroom in the second row. All right, let's check out the cargo space. You can pop open the tailgate by using a button located right here underneath the L. And once you get it open, you're working with 25 cubic feet behind the second row. And with the second row down, you're working with about 65 cubic feet. And surprisingly, that's a little bit more than the XC60. So that's kind of cool. Now, before we get into the pricing details on whether or not if you should buy this performance wagon, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'd love to show all of you. You have a total of four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you have two in the back right here in the center armrest. Here are the keys to the V60, and just like every other Volvo key, the buttons are on the side, and this one comes with the orange leather strap with the Swedish flag right there. Nice. Charging game-wise, up front, you don't have a wireless charger. You just have two USB-C ports right there. Those sitting in the back have two USB-C ports right there. And of course, let's do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. I love Volvo's indicators. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, solid. All right, so should you go for the Volvo V60 Polestar Engineered? Volvo has some of the longest names in the game. All right, yes, but keep in mind, it is really, really expensive. Pricing starts right under $72,000. That means this is around $14,000 more than the BMW M340i xDrive and just around two grand less than a BMW M3. And that's what makes it very tough for me to say, yeah, go out and buy this right now. I'm sure there will be true Volvo or performance wagon fans that will go for this, but that price tag is just really, really hard to justify. If you want the XC60 Polestar engineered, that will run you around $75,000. Now, keep in mind that this is the same engine that is available in the Volvo XC60 Recharge and the S60 Recharge and a bunch of other Volvo Recharge hybrids. So you can essentially access this performance without the Polestar NIS for around $52,000 if you go for the S60 Recharge or for around $58,000 if you go for the XC60 Recharge. Yeah, awesome wagon, just a little too expensive for me. I would just go for the S60 Recharge and save myself $20,000. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. By the way, I promised somebody that I would do a Volvo review without mentioning the Bowers and Wilkins sound system since I've mentioned it many times before, but I can't refrain myself from mentioning it because it's the best sound system ever made in history for any car out there. It is mind blowing how good the sound system is. And in concert mode, you can listen to music, podcasts, Coca Melon songs, even when you're with your kids, and it sounds outstanding. I would buy a Volvo just for that Bowers & Wilkins sound system. That's how good that sound system is.